final project at uh, the U of A for my undergrad study, uh, which was, uh, I made, I literally forced Megan to write a play, uh, and we took that play and I, uh, I gave it to some improvisational musicians who, so we produced the play, it went on in one space, and while it was going on, we filmed it with two different cameras and projected that feed into a second space where there were a group of four improvisational musicians who improvised live music based off of what they saw on the screen. That music was then projected into a third space where two visual artists uh, painted in live time whatever they were inspired to by the music that they heard, and then there was a video camera on that. So uh, the audience watching the play could also watch the visual art as it was created. It was an experiment to see if the themes from the play could be carried through the music into the art. And when Megan and I finished that and I graduated, <laughs> uh, we thought, well, we're not done yet. <laughs> Uh, we're not done yet, let's turn that on its head. Uh, and we said, it, it, like to me, uh, a big thing is communication in the art form that you have, that you create, uh, is so Im important. If you're not uh, communicating properly to your audience, are you actually doing anything? Or are you just wanking with the instrument or the paintbrush that you have? So, we took it and we turned it around and I commissioned a photographer from Vancouver to create a series of thematic photos which we gave to a musician who had to create 40 minutes of music based off of the photos that he saw and then that music was then given to Megan who wrote a show based off of the, this music she heard. Uh, I then took the play and the music and the photos and created a live performance based off of all three elements. Uh, Stuart Hoy, uh, our Woo! lovely gentleman, yeah! uh, was one of the actors in that piece. So what I present to you <laughs> is Stuart uh, reading a piece from that show based off of one of the tracks from the musician that created the music for it. Uh, just be warned, Stu Stuart hasn't even looked at these words or listened to the music in over two years. So this will not be the performance that you would have seen had you come see the show then, but it'll be exploratory, it'll be exploratory based off the music yeah. and the words. So, uh, with no further ado, from the beginning, from the beginning of the track, track four, uh, I give you track four and Stuart Hoy. And Megan's words. <laughs> can I start at any time? Alright. I'll see if I can get the levels right. Also, this is a really expensive script to be holding. <laughs> Does that get loud? Yeah. Okay. I'll just watch it. <laughs> Sorry? Step closer? To the microphone? That's correct, sir. Alright, done. because I'm too afraid to see what comes next. I try not to allow the dreamscapes to dance in front of my eyes as I call desperately for sleep. Quiet, uninterrupted, dark and deep sleep. I think 
think of her when I try not to think of my dreams. Her face is always cloudy. I can't read her eyes and I don't know what she's thinking. At 3.37 in the morning, she begins to fade completely. I can't remember the shape of her jaw or the line of her neck. Her shoulders blur and her hands lose their strong shape. She disappears so quickly she's soon a barely discernible specter. A mirage of colors and geometric shapes. Blocks and circles and triangles and rectangles piled up, up, up on one another until she's no longer blood and skin and bones, but wood and plastic and a combination of color applied with the paintbrush of my tired imagination. I chase after her, she falls further away from the clock. As I run towards her, the ground starts to fall away, slowly at first, a pebble, then another, but soon becomes an avalanche, the pieces of the floor crumbling and racing off the cliff of semi-consciousness. She waves to me, seemingly unfazed, and stands floating above the rushing rocks, her hands rectangles flashing in technicolor light, waving hello or goodbye. I can't tell. I scramble towards her until both her and the ground are gone and I am standing alone in the dark. Big red numbers flashing 340. Flashing sleep, flashing hello, flashing goodbye, flashing don't go. Please don't go. Beside me appears a table, a pen, one piece of paper, a chair for me to sit. I draw her the way I remember her. Blocks and circles, a triangle and rectangles piled up, up, up. I draw humility and compassion, a smile and shyness, gentle apathy and fingernails, intelligence, hair, eyes, humor, melancholy first, then sanguine, then vile. Just the way I remember her until the lines connect to become a continuous circuit of experiences and awkward moments. Bruises and laughter. Furiously I sketch until the page is filled and I am sure I have captured all of her. Appealing imperfection, stubborn love and passionate opinion. Picking up the paper, I examine my work of art, studying the shape of her. The clock, red, infringing, dominant and forceful says, remember. Before we move on, I'd really like to talk a little bit about uh, the process of, of taking everything and putting it together, and I'd really like Stu to be here as he was a, a part of it from the beginning. Um, the first time I listened to the music, I was secretly going, oh man, what is Megan going to think? <laughs> What's she going to write? <laughs> And then I passed it off to Megan and I, I wasn't allowed to talk to my sister, my best friend, my business partner, my roommate about <laughs> any of it. And so I had to basically bite my thumbs and not say anything. And, uh, and then she came back to me with a script and I put on headphones and took it outside and I read the script while listening to the music and I went, she fucking nailed it. <laughs> oh man, now I have a lot to live up to. <laughs> And uh, from that I uh, took it to work with my actors and the first time we went through it was very, very quick. 
And then the second time we went through it, we had a lot more time and a lot more experience with the script to work with it. And what we did is I would make them listen to the pieces and then they got to read the script. <laughs> And, uh, and working with it, uh, a big part of it was letting them improvise with the music and the text. Megan, in writing the script, gave us track timings. She was like, nope, this word starts here. I know it does. It's going to happen that way. And we went, fuck you, <laughs> uh, to start. And then we realized that it almost actually worked out better that way. So. Uh, Stu was actually pretty close through a lot of it. Ish, 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 ish. But it's a lot of text to get through in three and a half minutes. So, um, Stu, I, I pass it to you. Uh, what was the difference for you remembering while you were reading and remembering performing it when we actually had the rehearsed piece? <laughs> Uh, okay, well, it's a lot less polished. I think it's like I think one of the one of the differences that crops up for me, like you know what I mean, like uh, I feel like the last time we did that, it was a lot more. Also, I feel really weird talking into this microphone to all of you in this informal setting. I like, yeah, can you sit and do this talk? Yeah.